Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? What's happening? This is Gail Dudley with your news in motion. Today is Tuesday, October the 6th, 2020. Good morning, Pastor Alex. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, everyone. So, y'all know I reside in Ohio. So I got to give a shout out to Ohioans. Good morning, Latrice. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Sister Beverly Woodard. Um, I live in Ohio. Good morning, Kimberly. Um, so I have to give a big shout out. It is October the 6th. Early voting will begin in about 35 minutes. And I am happy to report. Good morning, Oscar. I am happy to report. I was uh, watching a live with... Um, with uh, Lachelle uh, Strahd, who's running for judge. And she said, she showed the live, there's a line out on Morse Road. This is if you're in Franklin County. There's a line on Morse Road and they have been lined up since 4 a.m. ready to vote at 8 a.m. So I'm so excited. I got so excited when I saw her live come on. I said, that's what I'm talking about. So that is what we need to do. So. Um, Ohio, and I'm sure there's other states, Ohio, today is uh, the day that you can begin to early vote. And if you're in Franklin County on Morse Road, um, they I was on a live, I'm watching a live, and the line, there was a line. People have been lined up outside that door on Morse Road since 4 a.m. So hopefully she'll, she'll come on here and give us a an update. If I knew how to share screens, I would actually bring her on, but I'm not that techie. I don't know how to do that. All right, y'all. October, October, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So let's continue to just cheer on um, all of those individuals. Good morning, Deborah Johnson, who is fighting breast cancer, who has overcome breast cancer, who is uh, getting chemotherapy, whatever it may be, radiation, whatever. Um, let's just continue to celebrate them and cheer them on, not just this month, but every day, but every day. So I wanted to give that shout out. All right, y'all. So the occupant returned to the White House on yesterday afternoon. Um, and I'm not too sure what was happening. Not too sure what was happening. Um, the doctors say that he may not entirely be out of the woods. So he's left the White House. We know that there is a whole set up there at the White House for him, a medical facility. So that's what's happening there. Um, but this tweet that he put out there, good morning to my brother, Lewis Pryor. Good morning, Kim Hill. This tweet, he says, you see it in enthusiasm for the president outside Walter Reed Hospital. You see it in registrations from Florida to Pennsylvania to West Virginia, where Republicans are outstripping Democrats two to one. If the president bounces back on a campaign trail, we will be invincible hero. Who, who not only survived every dirty trick the Democrats threw at him, but the Chinese virus as well. And I don't even like saying that. So let me just erase that. Hopefully, you know, we can just, I don't like that because that's not true. That is not true. Um, it was interesting that on Friday he called it what it is, which is the coronavirus. So I'm just quoting him and I, I should have caught myself and not even said that there. So forgive me. Um, so he mentioned that and then he goes, he will show America we no longer have to be afraid. So I, I don't even know. And then he talks about where the, he calls it a plague and where it comes from. Um, then he goes, we will win anyway. Um, and then he talked about, if you saw the other tweet, he talked about, um, um, he talked about um, don't be afraid of the, of the virus. And then he goes on and he says, um, Something about don't allow it to dominate your life. He just, he, he, is, he is making light of it. My words, my opinion. He's making light of it. And, and we need to vote like our lives depend upon. That's one of my arguments to vote. There are now 13, as of last night, I believe there's now 14 or 15 as of this morning, um, who have tested positive in, in, within the White House or within uh, the event that happened on that Saturday. Now, Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany and two of her aides have tested positive. 
to my understanding, the West Wing was shut down. But if you remember, he took off his mask and went in that direction. Um, there's a whole lot of this that's not right. A whole lot of it. So on top of that, um, the White House has decided not to do contract tracing at the super spreaded Rose Garden event. Um, they decided not to do contract tracing. What? And we also learned that in Ohio, when he was here, um, that they didn't even notify them that this was happening. And there's not contract tracing going on here as well. Um, it's also, it has also cut the Center for Disease Control and Prevention out, um, out of the process. So we don't know who has it. We don't know who, who, who contracted. We don't know any of that. Because they have count, they have cut out the CDC, and the White House has decided not to do contract tracing. Again, I say, y'all, that's this is why we vote. This is why we must vote. I'm serious, y'all. I'm serious. Hold on, I still got more news for you. Supreme Court reinstates witness requirement for South Carolina absentee ballot. Now, here's my question: Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? that Jamie Harrison and uh, Senator Lindsey Graham had a debate on Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, early, early evening, something like that. And then from that time, Jamie Harrison pulls ahead in the polls. The Supreme Court has a hearing on Monday and it rules to reinstate witness, witness requirement for South Carolina absentee ballot. Y'all, that didn't just happen. That didn't just happen. Y'all, we need to pay attention to what's happening. Um, and so here's the, here's the press release. The Supreme Court on Monday reinstated a restriction in South Carolina requiring that absentee voters provide a witness signature along with their ballot. Yeah. So it's a win. It says the ruling was a win for Republicans who had asked the justice to revive the rule. That's happening, y'all. That is happening, y'all. That is happening. That is happening. We have to vote, y'all. We have to vote. In other news, the White House blocks the new coronavirus vaccine gu guidelines as of his release on yesterday from, the, from Walter Reed. You do what you want to, but I'm not taking a vaccine. Now, I told y'all, I believe, a couple of weeks ago that because he, he appoints the commissioner of the FDA and the FDA, then they hire the, um, the uh, department uh, uh, of that uh, Food and Drug Administration, the Secretary of Food and Drug Administration, that they are a part of the administration, the White House administration. Again, y'all remember, you have to connect the dots. This is how people vote. We cannot, y'all heard me say this a gazillion times. We cannot just think about and vote for the two people at the top of the ticket. We have to vote for everything. We have to think about everything. So the White House blocks this new coronavirus vaccine guidelines. And this is New York Times reporting. It says the FDA proposed stricter guidelines for emergency approval of the coronavirus vaccine. But the White House chief of staff objected to provisions that will push approval past election day. So they wanna get this out here before election day. That's just the truth, y'all. That's just the truth. Um, that's just the truth. All right, y'all, LeBron James is back in the news, but this time it's not for basketball. It has nothing at all to do with basketball. As y'all remember, I talked about he was announcing his um, voting rights organization, uh, More Than a Vote. Um, he has been recruiting volunteers to become poll workers. As of this past Wednesday, he has over 10,000 who have agreed to be poll workers. Um, and he's doing this in collaboration with the NAACP Legal Fund. Um, and he's trying to get the poll workers to work primarily black electoral districts. So yay for that. And that's the New York Times reporting as well. New York Times has been very good with looking at other news lately and not just um, COVID-19, which is extremely important, but they're, they, they, I've noticed they're, they're also continuing to watch the other news. So, um, I, I'm doing the same. There are many others of us that are doing it, but if we're not getting those press releases, it's hard for us to dig into what's happening. So shout out to, to New York times 
who's continuing to stay the course to bring other news. So with that being said, um, in speaking with a friend of mine on Sunday who's, who's a part of all these different polling committees and so forth, y'all, they're starting to already merge voting locations. And y'all know as well as I do, if there are certain people who will go to a polling location, location because they're not going to be notified in most cases, not unless they continue to look up the data themselves, and they go to a polling location and they find out that it is closed, y'all know good and well they may not go and look for the next polling location, or they may not even have transportation to get there. Y'all, if you can exercise your civic duty on November 3rd, sign up to be a poll worker you can go to www.eac.gov, E as in election, A as in assistance, C as in commission.gov, eac.gov. Our lives depend upon it. You know, and I'm not just saying that. I know you've heard other people say that. It is the truth, y'all. This is where we are. So they're already beginning to merge polling locations, which means they're purging those um, they're, they're purging, they're getting rid of the ones in the low income areas, the marginalized areas, the areas that are, are impoverished. Come on. You saw, you heard me say what just happened in South Carolina. Y'all, this is not a joke. This is not a drill. This is really happening. So if we need to start carpooling, just wear your mask. Maybe only if you have a car that can seat five, maybe only three of you can go so that you can social distance, wear your mask, put the windows down. I don't know. We just have to figure out how to go forward, y'all. Y'all, this is serious. This is serious. So shout out to LeBron James for that. Um, will they or won't they? Well, they got it done. The AG in New York isn't playing with the Trumps. So Eric Trump finally interviewed in New York fraud inquiry. He did that on yesterday. Um, this was the inquiry into whether um, Trump and the Trump Organization committed fraud by overstating assets to get lo to get loans and tax benefits. So he did. Um, he did, he knows he's not supposed to lie. So let's pray he didn't lie. Let's pray he didn't lie. Um, I wanted to tell you about this other story that I thought was was um, it, it, it brought me to tears. I'll be honest with you. Um, Orlando local news. Orlando no Local News um, Department of um, um, Economic helped a single mom with 12 weeks of unemployment benefits. She's a mother of five. She was diagnosed with COVID-19 days after starting a new job. So she had been furloughed. She didn't have a job. She, her, her unemployment benefits were beginning to run out. She ended up landing a job. But then after she got the job, which was only two days on the job, it was actually 11, out, 11 and a half hours, 11 and a half hours total. She found out that she tested positive for COVID-19. She was actually cleaning out public transportation um, uh, buses um, and she tested positive. Well, they wouldn't put her back on unemployment. So this community went together, and she's a black woman, mother of five. This community went together in Orlando and said, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to give her back her unemployment. So she said that um, she's behind on everything. The bills have been mounting up. Um, she should be out on the streets already, but people are trying to come in and help her. So pray for her. Her name is Kimberly um, Kalaki. Um and I want to say there's a link. I don't have the link, but if you want to help, I think there was a link. If you go to Orlando News and put in her name, and I'll put her name in the comment section, I believe you can help her if you choose to. All right, in case anyone has forgotten, y'all, Black Lives Matter. Uh, we, have, we have Jonathan Price, age 31, a, a Texas man called the pillar of the community, was fatally shot by police officer after he tased him. And what this young man was doing, what this 31-year-old man was doing, he was breaking up a fight, a domestic fight, within a gas station grocery store, um, 65 miles northeast of Dallas. So that happened. That's still happening. And it's still a burden. In addition to that, um, uh, I have been sharing this with you all off and on. Um, I haven't been fatally shot, um, um, as you know, because I'm here, here talking, speaking with you. But I got into um, this back and forth yesterday 
And I finally had to just stop. Like it wasn't worth it anymore um, for me. Um, but um, someone wanted to attack me with the news in um, motion because of the fact that I'm not a Trump supporter and I'm not voting for him. And so there was a there was a gang of about maybe seven or eight white males who wanted to start inboxing me and going back and forth with me, talking about I'm going to hell and Jesus doesn't love me. And um, I think the, the, the comment says something about um, I'm lower than scum, something or another. I don't remember the whole thing. And so it, it was kind of crazy that I had to ask some people, like I called up some intercessors and said, okay, I just need y'all to pray for me. Because I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know where they're located. I don't know anything. And so, um, and you know, they won't do it on the wall. They do it in, in messenger. So, and I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I was just like, you know, we, this is where we are. This is where we are. So, um, I know there's some pastors on here. There are some um, ministry leaders on here. I think it's time for us to write some sort of study to help people know that there's not a Democrat or Republican that's listed in the Bible. Nowhere. Nowhere. It's not in there. Um, and, and to help empower and to encourage other people. I think it's time for that Bible study to be written. Um, articles are fine. That's great. But I think it's time for some sort of study to be written. Because what happened was on my Instagram, when I went over, I left her and I went over to Instagram. Good morning, Elder Pew. Good morning. When I left, y'all, she has a prayer time from 6.30 to 7 a.m. Y'all need to check it out. When I left here and went over to Instagram, there was a, a young woman who messaged me afterwards. And she says, thank you. She goes, I just happened to see your, your um, live come up and I opened it up. She said, I was removed from my church because they found out that I was not voting for Donald Trump. She said, thank you. She said, I literally thought I was going to hell. And she said, because of your Instagram live, this was the one yesterday, if y'all remember that. And I don't change it. I just shorten it on, on Instagram because I only have so much time. And then I upload this one onto YouTube. So she then went to the YouTube so she could see the entire episode from yesterday. And she says, you don't know. Now this is, I'm getting emotional. Ugh. She said, I almost took my life. That's what she said. She said, because they, they removed me from my church. Is that crazy, y'all? Is that where we are with this election? That because somebody's not voting the way you want them to vote, you're going to kick some young girl out of church. Are you kidding me? This is where we are. This is where we are. Ugh. This is so unprofessional, right? But I'm just real, y'all. By now, y'all know I'm just real. So, so that's what happened to this young lady. So I was like, so I took the fight first and was able to report out and then give y'all the news without even sharing that. Then go to IG and report out the news and she just so happens to watch it. And I said to her, I said, you know, it was the Holy Spirit that led you to click onto this Instagram. I said, that's what happened. And I said, I got your back. So we've been dialoguing back and forth. Y'all really think that there needs to be a Bible study. I know Pastor Alex, you are on here. I know there's um, Elder Pews on here. I know there's a lot of uh, pastors and ministers and, and intercessors that are on here. Um, Y'all, we really do need to do something. This young woman, and she's in uh, Plano, Texas, Plano, Texas. They told her she either had to vote this way or be removed from the church. She took door number two and said, okay, I'm out. She said, because I, I don't believe in this. But she said she was close to taking her life over because of the way she chooses to vote. Are you kidding me? So y'all, we got to pray. We got to pray. So for the win, for the win, for the win, for the win, 
we have every poll worker that's out there even today working um, early voting. Every, every last one of them. We don't know who they're going to have to uh, face today. We don't know who they're going to have to escort out today or any other place that has early voting that's starting today. So we just want to cover them in prayer, y'all. We want to cover them in prayer. We have to. We have to. Um, I, I, for my inspirational message, I want to talk about um, Psalm 139. And I just really want to say you are all uniquely and wonderfully made. There has been no mistake in the making of who you are. So if you are that person who takes a stand and you are that fighter, that warrior, you're uniquely made. If you're that person who wars in prayer and who sits back and behind the scenes, you are uniquely made. If you are the person who is bold enough to, to give facts and to be able to go with the back and forth, you are uniquely made. If you are the person who says, well, you know, I talked about last week, um, the peace seekers and the cynics, what, wherever you fall, you're still uniquely made. If you're the person who has um, said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to be still and know that he is God, you are uniquely made. Whatever your calling if it's a prayer calling, if it's an evangelistic calling, if it is a political calling, if it is a business calling, if it is a career calling, if it's a mom in chief or a dad in chief calling, whatever it is, you are uniquely made. But here's my encouragement to you. My encouragement to you and me as well is to study to show ourselves approved and to stay in God's word. We have to stay in the word of of God because he is our strength. He is our strength. So leading up, we're now, we're less than 30 days. I think this is now day 28 from November 3rd. Leading up to November 3rd, I'm asking every one of us to find a prayer partner. Someone that we can contact and say, hey, I need to, I need you to pray for me. Someone to say, hey, this is happening. You can send a quick text. You can send a, a, a quick call, an in message, whatever it is. We all need someone covering each other in prayer. This is not this is about to intensify. And and I'm very careful to 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 stay out of that lane when I'm doing news in motion, but I have to go there today. This is going to intensify. Not, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this to prepare you. This is not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be a walk in the park, y'all. So we have to stay the course. We have to be watch women and watch men on the wall watching. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. Again, I'm not here to scare you, but I know what has been happening and what I've been, been discerning in my spirit. This is about to intensify. Do not be so, I'm trying to think how to say this. If you're going to the polls, go with somebody. Go with somebody. Have a plan, y'all. Have a plan. Just like Mike Nicholson on yesterday, y'all know what happened on our route, uh, State Route 270 here in Columbus on Saturday, how Mike Nicholson said he had to remember that his two-year-old son was in the car. So he used wisdom to get off of the highway after y'all y'all saw y'all read what he said. They had bats, they were calling him the N-word, they had and they had encircled him on the highway. He got off the highway. He was able to get off the highway. He said then he went to a parking lot and he sat there for 20 minutes to process. Y'all, we have to plan. I'm not saying don't go to the grocery store. I'm not saying not, don't go out and do what you need to do, but be prayed up and have that prayer partner as we're going forward. We have to. We have to. We have to. So there's my win. There's my message. There's all the news headlines. Pray for the young lady. I won't give her name because I don't know who knows her since I told y'all she's from Plano, Texas. You may know who this is, so I won't give her name. But pray for her. But praise God she did not take her life. Praise God that she did not take her life. After they removed her from the church because of how she votes. So y'all, we're in this together. Let's keep going. Let's keep encouraging each other. Let's keep strengthening each other. All right, y'all. I am Gail Dudley. I'm y'all can tell now I just cry and I don't care. That's who I am. I know it's probably like she's doing the news. That's not professional. This I'm being real. I have to be real. I have to be real, y'all. By now, all of you on here know just how real I am. I have to be real. 
So y'all, until tomorrow, don't forget, look at those questions that I per that I gave you all, what was it, three, two weeks ago, three weeks ago for the debate. I think this debate is going to be much different. Lord, please let it be, let it be. So those same questions you can apply, do your research, know how they voted in the past. That is public knowledge. You can check out how uh, Mike Pence voted in um, Indiana, um, uh, Indiana, excuse me. You can find out how uh, Senator Kamala Harris has been voting and how she's voted previously and things she's done. Whether you like what either one of them has done or not, just look at their background, their, their uh, prior voting, understand their platform and see how they answer questions on Wednesday night. That is Wednesday night on all broadcasts. All right, y'all got to go to IG. I'm Gail Dudley. Have a great day with your news in motion. Please share, share, share. Thank you so much, everybody. Love you. Thank you for your support. Peace out.